Man, it's, right. a, it's a, t- a tough time to be alive right now um, with everything that's happening, um, you know, inflation and, and uh, the lockdowns and just a big, the market uh, now that the way it is. What, what should somebody be doing today to protect themselves against what's happening? Because it seems to me like we're entering a time of like, we're about to get hit hyperinflation. But what's your perspective on that? Honestly, like, I think that the, the approach that the Fed is taking to prevent it is, um, is probably going to work, but we're going to, you know, so we'll, we'll probably beat inflation, but we're probably going to go into a massive recession. So it's like, okay, okay what's the point of that? <laughs> oh, I agree. I mean, somebody did a chart that showed the, um, where the housing bubble was and where the COVID bubble is. <laughs> it's like... Oh, can you show? Can you send it to me? Oh yeah, I'll send it. It's insane, dude. It's uh, I'll even show it right here on the screen. Um, it's uh, here. Let me grab it. Look at that. How did you share that from your phone? from my phone? Right? Yeah. It's uh, Zoom has an option now to uh, to screen share. Oh, that's pretty cool. But do you see that oh, housing wow. bubble where it was and where we're at now with COVID? That's where we're at. We're all we're all the way up here. Um, and that's not even the full chart. So, um, so that's the first one. Then look at, I, you know, I mean, I don't think we're in a housing bubble as much as people think we are. I think housing prices are crazy, but telecommuting, what's happened. So what's happened differently is that wealth moved out of the, the, the city centers like San Francisco, Manhattan, and it got dispersed to Areas like San Diego, for example, and that pushed the prices up above median income, like the, the median income that distorted the chart basically. So, here's an example I lived in the Bay Area and it is really expensive there. When, when I moved down here, it was half the price per square foot in, you know, in, in a similar neighborhood to where I lived. And, uh, you know, I was like, wow, I can get all this value for my money and I moved down. And now the prices are equalized. The Bay Area hasn't gone up as much. Uh, a lot of people have left and moved down to San Diego. And now we're sitting with um, you know expensive homes in San Diego, but that's not because that's because like embedded wealth moved and income moved from the Bay Area because of telecommuting, whatever else. So it's not a bubble. The housing market isn't a bubble. It's a restructuring of the American economy. It's basically a reallocation of capital from uh, densely populated areas to less populated areas. But now, so this is what the Fed. These guys don't get this shit. Like these guys are a bunch of morons. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> I love it. Um, but I agree with you, man. I, I, I've, I've been telling people that it, it feels like more like a redistribution of yeah. Of the same guys who told us like four, five months ago, inflation will be transitory, really. And we were all looking at them, going, "You just printed trillions of dollars. You think this is going to be transitory? Good luck with that." <laughs> uh, I, the, the, the first time I heard about quantitative easing, I was like, "That sounds made up." <laughs> Uh, but yes, um, it's bananas. It's, it's actually banana Republic. <clears throat> so I just have one last chart to show you and, um, kind of get your perspective because I actually had this chart checked by a mathematician who is like intelligent in, uh, um, like, um, uh, um, uh, cryptography math as well as fractal math, like fractal geometry math. So this guy, he looked at this and he was like, Oh no, it's real. This is it. So this is the chart. And essentially, this chart is showing us a compar- comparison or like a, a correlation between the inflation rate of fiat to the deflation uh, rate uh, of no, Bitcoin. No, no. Have you seen this? Um, oh, this is, isn't this a stock to flow model or something it's different? It's stock to flow model, okay. Uh, yeah, so this, uh, like, I mean, the math, the math equation is there is an exponential inverse hyperbolic tangent model that just shows. Um, the again the the deflation rate of fiat or of bitcoin to the inflation rate of of dollars and essentially he came up with a date and that's may 21st 2029 is when there will be uh, it's this uh, dotted line here at the end where you won't be able to exchange any amount like you can you, you won't be able to exchange exchange one satoshi for billions of dollars it'll be that that worthless the the fiat and so he said, this guy, this friend of mine, he said that in the next year and a half to two years, that's when we're gonna we're gonna really start to feel and see the hyperinflation hit. Mm. So, what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, 
it's it, like I know I know you have to check this, so like I'm just I'm just kind of throwing this at you. Yeah, you know, uh, let's I'm, say it's I'm, true. I'm doing, the, it's I'm, doing, I'm doing all this math in my head right now, mentally, and uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, you know, it's plausible. It's absolutely plausible. I mean, the one thing I will say is there's a lot of reflex reflexivity in in politics, and and that really means that when things get really bad, like th that's a steady, this is probably a steady state projection, assuming that there's nothing that politicians can do to fix it or right. attack it. Yeah. That's and like not, not changing anything and just going in the direction that we're going. Yeah, exactly. And you know, that's on how the world works. Things do change. And, and it's kind of like the, the other day, the earth stood still, uh, you watch the movie with Keanu Reeves. Yes. I never read the book. But at the end, it was like, you know, without being a spoiler, it's like, you know, mankind doesn't change and they're taken to the brink of extinction. I love it. I love it. And I, and I love that you're doing, you're saying this because um, there's, there's, there's a, definitely a drive, uh, you know, definitely in, this, in the crypto community where, oh, we want to get people in, but, but they're doing it in a way of creating fear instead of going like, oh, no, this is just like another path like we can take instead of this other path. So I, I, I'm glad you said that because at the end of the day, you can be afraid of everything that's happening moving forward and you can adjust to it, but that's just living in fear. That's just adjusting to the fear of something potentially happening instead of like, let's live in this moment. What's happening now? How can we move through this moment now? <laughs>